So my name's Sean Robertson and I'm Sales and Marketing Director at Suntiqua International. And I wanted to give you a bit more of a uh, detailed overview today of the Sunseeker 90 Ocean. Now at just over 27 metres long, she fits into the range very well. But that's not what is so special about the 90 Ocean. It's the beam, which is just over 7 metres, so it's an incredible size for this length. But more importantly, if we just go a bit further forward here, you can see something very unique on this 90 Ocean. And that's the shape of this bow, this much more upright stem and just the sheer size of what we're looking at here. Now, this is not just for looks, but what it allows us to do is move the whole interior accommodation block on both levels much further forward into the boat. And the big advantage with that is not just more space internally, but what we gain at the stern and what gives this yacht the ocean name. Let's go and have a look. So the new Ocean Series is all about having this spacious area right at water level. And let's just give you some scale. So the yacht is just over seven metres wide, but here we've got a good six metres of usable space in beam and over four metres in length. But that only tells half the story. So let's have a look through all of the features that we then have. So we've got the normal high-low platform here. So a good sized tender dropping down into the water and giving you that, you know, she'll go down to knee height underwater. So a great swim on, swim on, on off area, launch the tender, recover the tender. Forward of that, we've then got space for at least one three-seater uh, jet ski. And then cleverly hidden in the deck, you see you've got two hatches here and here, which are housed sea bobs. Now that's where the, the party tricks really then start to happen. So this yacht is fitted with the extend system. Now what that gives you is either a fold out sun pad come chaise long on the aft end here. So this moulding literally folds down 90 degrees. Or you can lift this whole de door up to horizontal position and then that fold out shares long becomes an extension of the main cockpit. Not only that, but when you lift this door, it obviously op opens up proper access to the sea bob lockers, but also then access to a vast protected storage area under the main deck. Beyond that, we've got a built-in sea stair. So there's no fold out bathing ladder that, you know, very narrow, difficult to use. So you have a hydraulically operated, uh, what they call sea stair that comes out of this port side here. Now that acts as your ladder into the water. So it makes access in and out of the water exceptionally easy, but also it acts as your passerelle. So once you're back in harbor, this lifts up and you've actually got steps up and down to the quayside. So again, very, very easy to use on both functions. If we come over to the starboard side, again, once you remember once this deck is empty like it is now, you have a fold out barbecue, you have sockets here for parasols, you've got showers underneath the extend door for when you come in and out of the water. So it really is what I would say a proper beach club down at this waterside level and what creates the start of what will be an important range to Sunseeker being the ocean range. So let's go from here up into the aft cockpit and we give you more idea of the scale of this yacht. Before we go out, everywhere you look, you'll see there's useful storage, there's bins for the, for the ropes, access to switch gear, all hidden away very nicely on the stern. Steps both sides, so it gives you very easy access up to the aft cockpit and then a slight lift and push round on that friction hinge for access to the aft cockpit. Port side, you've got a small wet bar, ice maker, more storage here on the aft end. And we come into then this aft cockpit, which again is just vast. You know, remember we're on a, a 90 foot yacht and give you some scale when we've seen this 
90 Ocean moored alongside a 116 yacht, for example, the scale of the beam and this open stern really just belies its length. I mean, it just gives you a huge entertainment space in this aft end. Now you notice all the furniture here is loose. So all of this can be arranged as more as formal seating, dining. We can have a, a better dining setup with a fixed table, loose tables. So it's very, very flexible again for how each client will want to use the, this all important aft end. You'll see these gates here are actually on a locking mechanism and hopefully you'll see in the video that's playing as I speak here how that extend systems works with those gates opening up to the side and then the door lifting and the extended cockpit seating folding out which gives you then a totally different concept on how this aft deck works and I mean it becomes vast I mean we've already got I would say easily three maybe three and a half meters from the door to here plus then the additional seating overhanging the aft cockpit so again great flexibility very practical can be really designed how each client wants to use it little practicalities like a fold down privacy or sunscreen between the pillars here even down to the little micro leds set into this overhead that just give those little details which set this whole aft end apart and really make it a very comfortable and special place to be from here i think we'll go through to the saloon give you an idea of what that upright bow has done to the interior space and obviously what you gain from this huge beam as well what hits you immediately is this fully glazed four panel door and what you'll notice is that I can slide open the first section but then pulling again releasing this second section you slide across and I can do the same with the third so immediately you can open up this massive saloon and interlink it with what we've already talked about outside the massive aft cockpit and even the extend seating now give you some idea of scale i mean again in here i would say we're probably close to six meters of beam and if you go from the the aft end of the galley back through to the aft end of that extend we're probably getting close to 20 meters of just open entertaining space and of course alternatively later in the day or if you want to shut out the heat or the cold you know we can just slide this across again and close it all off and you come back to a more traditional separated areas so control wise let's just quickly look here you'll see these Weimar touch panels all the way through the yacht so you've got touch screen control for lighting AV etc down onto iPads as well which is obviously quite important but I think the key in this area is the fact that you've just got a huge floor space with all loose furniture so really with the exception of that TV bulkhead and where the controls are we've just looked at all the rest of this is loose now you can see this one's been set up as a very comfortable lounging seating area full dining forward of that and then you've got this you know quite open space on the port side where it could easily be filled if a client wants more seating maybe uh, you know a small club table set up or even extended dining if you move the dining table to this side it's a very flexible and we're seeing that already in the boats that have been sold you know with extended sofas extended dining or just really nicely segmented areas because you've you've got the space here to do it i think the next thing that really hits you in this area is that you all three sides of this room that we're looking at port starboard and obviously that aft door out to the cockpit is fully glazed i mean i'm not that tall but you can see here you've got probably close to two meters of glazing literally floor to ceiling and mirrored on the uh, starboard side so it, the uh, the amount of light and openness it feels like a huge uh, sort of penthouse apartment in here it's uh, you know a great feeling of 
being inside but not feeling enclosed. And this particular boat also has the option of the, the sliding door on this port side. So if you do want to open up further, you know, opening up the patio door, opening up this port side door as well, you've got a, a great, you know, sort of open space then, totally connected to the outside of the yacht. And uh, hopefully you can see up on the camera is when we're looking through here, it's, it's, it's quite an illusion. It almost looks like a mirror to start with, but then you realise that you're looking right the way through the bulwark of the yacht, which is fully glazed. So uh, it's probably a feature that may be easier to see from a shot from the outside, but the way that bulwark is raised, so it, it's very high, so you feel completely inside the yacht, you know, very safe. But then from that height down to deck level, is feature glazing so looks fantastic from the inside you've got that vision all the way out to the water but also adds like a dark silhouette feature on the outside of the yacht looks looks stunning so if we carry on forward um i think it's worth noting the the ceiling and how this you've sort of got a multi-faceted uh ceiling here from this gloss lacquer ribbed feature on the outside extremities coming into upholstered panels which give a softer edge and then this raised beautiful white lacquer uh, top ceiling which not only is a, a feature in itself but it hides all of the indirect lighting and I think you know actually that's key I don't know if you can see on the camera is the, the lighting is so well hidden and done so discreetly that you haven't got huge you know rafts of lights running through this interior and i think because of all the reflection off the lacquer the grouping of these spotlights and then the hidden lighting within this feature you know it it, it gives off great light but it's done beautifully it's actually so discreet you don't really even notice the lights at all and also in the aft end and forward end of this feature you've got the air conditioning um, outlets so again, totally hidden away, blowing air gently across the ceiling, falling into the centre of the room. So again, nicely hidden away and not just an ugly vent placed into a corner pillar or the ceiling. So coming forward, we'll come to the galley first. Now there's, there's multi options on this. So we have a, uh, either a completely open galley more of a bar style that you may see in a in a large uh, apartment um, we can go fully enclosed so if you're really using the galley a lot and you want that fully enclosed uh, maybe if you've got a, a chef on board or just a, doing a lot of cooking we can do that or you've got this sort of uh, compromise as we see here with these shoji screens so these are glazed and obviously slide across to enclose the galley so I mean it's a bit of a feature with the stone the wood and the matte lacquer so it does look good you know when it's now when you've just got it open as a feature when looking through the yacht but obviously maybe later in the day when it's being used or has been used you can simply slide the screens across and hide the galley away so it is a real you know a bit of a, 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 a a good compromise on having the open space and the visibility but then being able to close off and it's the same on this inboard edge so we've got a a doorway here so again shows you screens pulled across door closed and it's totally hidden away if we just come inside the galley it's it's a great size actually we've got you know full stand full height fridge freezer here more space here for fridge drawers or storage oven microwave hob all done beautifully in this it's like a matte silver lacquer I mean, it's, it's beautifully done and obviously all of these open to reveal more storage around the top edges importantly as well whether it's a boat that's maybe run by a crew or or privately is you've got a direct access out to the side deck so if you're bringing goods on board, stores on board, you haven't got to bring it through the 
saloon space. And also it, it provides great ventilation. So if you are cooking, as well as the extraction over the hob and oven, you've got a, a doorway that can be opened up uh, to give you know fresh air in. And then at this far end, you can't quite see there, you've got a, a wine captain. So I think that's a 20 bottle wine cooler wine captain at the far end of the galley. So beautifully finished. When it's not in use, it's a real feature. I mean, it's the same finishes as elsewhere in the saloon. Uh, and it does work nicely that, you know, you can really extend the length of that saloon by having those doors open. So if we come back out, we've got the staircase to the lower deck, um, to the, uh, the, foot of the guest cabins, so there's two twins and the master, which we'll come to in a while. We've got a day head on the port side. Again, great space, huge window in there. So again, no areas of these yachts do you of this yacht do you feel enclosed at all? Um, and you'll just notice detail. Just look on this door as well. The way that the wood uh, veneers have been matched coming down to give this V shape. Very unusual. And this is a new wood for us as well. The smoked eucalyptus, which has got a real deep figuring. It's almost a a three D effect when you see the the figuring in the veneer. So coming forward, we come to the first step. Now that's quite incredible. You think from that aft end of the cockpit all the way through to here, completely flat, including in through the patio door. So this is the first step you actually come up. Now at this point, coming into the wheelhouse, again, depending on how the yacht will be used, we do have the option of a door which can slide across here. So if you, again, maybe with crew on board and you want it completely separated, which gives them almost a private mess area up on this deck, that can be done. Or as with this one, open, you know, the, the, the actual helm area is quite separated anyway. And then this table just makes a great place to be sat if you've got some work to be done or sitting with a copy and newspaper in the mornings. I mean, it's absolutely stunning underneath the screens here. And that's when you look back up and you see yet another feature, which is this glass ceiling. So this is in the, the, uh, the brow forward of the flybridge screen, completely glazed with blinds. So if you've got too much sunshine, you can pull the blinds across electrically to give you some shade. But when it's open, I mean, it just gives you an immense feeling of, you know, of height in this space. So coming to starboard, we come to the main helm itself. So behind the seats here, we've got a second door out to the main deck. So this is an addition to the one we had in the galley. So again, for the captain, or if you're running the boat, the owner, very quick and easy access to the side deck. We've got the twin uh, helm seats, both electrically uh, controlled for height, recline, and obviously fore and aft movement. And then into the helm itself, well, I mean, we could talk about the helm for hours on its own, but as with all of the Sunseeker range now, we've got a management system here, which gives fingertip control to all of the systems on board and gives you good visibility of breakers, of systems on and off. Uh, place to fit an iPad, charge an iPad here, engine controls both here. So the engines, main engines are two MAN uh, V12s, either at 1650 horsepower, which give you about 23, 24 knots top end, or as with this one, the 1900 mans, which give you more, you know, closer to 27 knots. There is an option now as well to go to the 2000 series, so the the, MA, uh, the MAN 2000s, which again, just give you that little bit more on the top end, maybe 28 knots and a slightly higher or broader spectrum of cruise range, anywhere from sort of 12 through to 22, 23 knots. So good flexibility of engines or MAN and give the boat great performance and economy. You've got to remember this yacht at 12 knots can give you in excess of, uh, what, 1,400 miles, 1,500 miles. So it's a great range, 13,000 litres. So really covers you for extended cruising or if you're just on board for a week and don't want to be stopping for fuel all the time, great options. 
Navigation wise, this one's been set up with the two uh, Simrad 24 inch screens. Um, we, we offer options on that. Simrad is preferred for us, but if you are more au fait with Raymarine or Garmin, then we can look at that and incorporating that into the yacht, no problem at all. Wireless charger here for your phone. Um, thruster controls as bow and stern hydraulic thruster. And of course, stabilizers, all important now on any boat uh, throughout the range to ensure you've got that comfort, particularly when you're sat at anchor. Okay, so if we come back away from the helm, we've talked about the staircase already that leads to the, uh, the master cabin and the two aft guest cabins. And then forward, we've got an, its own separate staircase down to the VIP. So we've come right forward from that separate staircase and it's, it's a pretty grand entrance into what we have to remind ourselves is not the master cabin. This is the VIP cabin. Now what hits you straight away before we get into any detail is because of the shape of that bow and how this forward cabin's been positioned is that you've got so much beam. Norm you know, normally in the forward cabin, even of a 90 footer, you really feel the bow being pulled in because of that more uh, upright stem and the feature bow of the ocean, you don't get that. I mean, there is some curved shape here, but you don't feel that you're at the bow of the boat. And you see it in the floor, flat floor level through here. Yes, a single step up here towards the bed, which actually helps, to be honest, because of the height of the bed. But, you know, it's just great floor space, which you don't normally see in the bow of the boat. When we came down the stairs, immediately we came in, we had a great uh, vanity space. We've got wardrobes here on the uh, starboard side that open up nicely. Drawers right below here on the window side. And then king size bed, 50 inch TV screen. And I mean, it just doesn't feel squeezed in. Another thing just, you know, to really sort of take into account here is the size of these side windows. Now, we're in the bow of the boat, uh, okay, 90 footer, but normally with the shape here, you lose a lot of that window space, but these are absolutely huge. Both have got opening ports as well, so if you want to run the boat with no air con, just want the fresh air coming through, no problem. And what I particularly like is these framed gloss lacquer features around the windows, which not only make it a, a much nicer fit for the blinds, but just a real feature on uh, on both sides of the yacht. Obviously, material-wise, it's going to be totally bespoke to each client. But the things that don't change are, you know, the LED strips running down through the ceiling and then off to these two angles creates again a real feature. And like the saloon, you go from the lacquer at the side to upholstered panels and back to lacquer again in the middle, which not only is it just a nice in the way it looks and the texture, but gives you this reflection around the room, which, although it doesn't really even need it, gives you the effect of even more space. And then if we come back to the port side, we've got access into a great ensuite, huge double shower, feature mirrors all the way around, which I'm sure we can show in some photos, uh, which, just again reflect the light and the space which just give it the feeling of space which you get all the way through this yacht i think it's, it's key that in every area we've been the height the breadth you feel in each area so remember like we said this is the vip cabin now let's go and look at the other two guest cabins and the master as with all our areas of the 90 ocean even this staircase is grand with great space lovely leather wrapped handrail and coming down into what is a real feature um, companionway here with the the backlit wood the feature lighting on the ceiling so it, again just feels very special underneath that staircase we came down this section does lift up and that gives you great areas to store bags suitcases once they're emptied out into the uh, plentiful uh, wardrobes in each of the cabins so we're going to the first of the guest cabins so we've got two equal cabins port and starboard both with twin beds that obviously 
once we remove these little bedside ca uh, cabinets, lift them off, the beds slide together, those cabinets go back on the outside edges and then you've got a great size double, an oversized double to be honest, you know, good queen size. Obviously that's repeated in the starboard side. Picture window again, and again, importantly, the opening port light. So if you want that fresh air flow through the cabin, very easily achieved. And again, that framework, I think it really makes a whole feature of that window and it makes it very easy to close off with the electric blind system. You've got these different textures and materials. Again, this is a very, <laughs> It's got a real good texture to the feel on this almost uh, high-end wall covering on the bottom end, then upholstery, a mixture of lacquer, LED lighting and upholstery again on the ceiling. So it gives you that real detailed feel. It feels very special inside. Obviously opposite the berths, 50 inch TV, sound bar. So great visibility again, if you are uh, using the TV in the cabin. So forward, we've got a full-size standing mirror here. Very important for the guests. Great size wardrobe at the end of the cabin with side storage for shoes or um, smaller items and full hanging storage in the center. And just look at that door, I don't know if you can see it. The, <laughs> it's, it's a wardrobe door, but look at the size of it and the size of this stainless and uh, glass handle. It is, feels really substantial. And then the ensuite, again, great size, frosted window at the end, opening port, huge shower, overhead rain dance shower head, uh, and a beautiful sink and uh, toilet area. Again, feature sliding mirror, which you'll see throughout the yacht, which is a feature in all of the bathrooms. Works really nicely. I mean, it's a great light cabin, great space. I mean, you know, for a, which is the small, you know, the smaller guest cabins, it's still a great space. And again, you get to feel the beam, you know, with the cabins coming right out. And as we've said already, here on the starboard side, you've got exactly the same again, a repeat, great size cabin, perfect replica of the, uh, of the port side. So really, you get that, just that sense of space everywhere you go on this yacht. So if we continue over to starboard through this beautifully lit companionway, before we go in the master cabin, I'll just highlight this, which is an absolutely massive storage space. Now, great is just storage, maybe towels, linens, etc. Certain markets, we've actually seen owners putting in separate washer dryers into there, where they want maybe their own washer washing separate from the crew space. So again, a, a multitude of uses for that space. And here, is coming into the master cabin. Now, <laughs> this feels like an apartment in its own right. The size of the windows, the height, but more importantly, the beam. It's, it's actually got so much beam, when I walk across here, you, you, you don't realize how long it is. I mean, it is just a huge space. And I think it's, it's equal to anything you'll see on a 100 foot plus just a great space and the light that comes from the windows and all of this indirect LED lighting and what we've said all the way through the reflection of materials is just fantastic huge bed I mean oversized king size bed mirror TV on the front bulkhead with the sound bar again below and even just these feature sections here, just little details that really make this cabin feel special. And it's all those different materials again. Yeah, I just noticed on the, the bedside cabinets, yeah, the leather wrapped drawers around the front mixed with the eucalyptus wood. It's very, very special. Um, forward on the starboard side, we've got a bank of four wardrobes, each one again, this huge section of door feels, you know, again, oversized with the stainless and glass handles. And there's one, two, three, four large cabinets split between shelves, full length hanging, 
the safes are in there as well. And we've even got a hidden away oddments cabinet behind this full length mirror, which again, it's, it's, it's just a lovely, neat touch. You know, it's probably about a space about this deep, but full height, all shelved out. Just a great use of space. On the starboard side, we've got this set up as a chaise long. Um, again, a vanity area come desk on the port side here. All loose though. So again, with your own ideas, whether it's more storage, more seating, a proper desk area can be built in very easily because you've got the space to do it on this, uh, in this master cabin. And then forward, port side access door, and we come through into the heads. Oh, huge space again. So I mean, you've got right angle countertop, twin sinks, storage all the way around for towels, personal effects, and then again, a, a massive shower. I mean, again, with the overhead, rain dance head, separate uh, shower wand as well. And I, I mean, it's, it's a triple size shower. And again, because of all the glass and the reflection on the stone and materials, it feels brilliantly light. And of course, it's got its own separate window and opening port. So again, you can get that fresh air flow through when needed. Just a great space, really feels special. That's giving you a good view of the accommodation deck. Uh, we've been through the aft cockpit, how, that, how special that is on this 90 Ocean, and obviously all the way through the saloon. But I think from here, let's go up to the flybridge and just start looking at these external spaces. So here we are on the forward end of the uh, 90 Ocean flybridge, and give you some idea of scale. We've got about 10 meters of length, five meters of beam, and again, a very, very flexible layout. But if we start here right at the forward end, obviously the main helm console with a great repeat of all the instrumentation down below. So much more than just being a second, a secondary position, this really can be used just as well as the primary helming position, just as much as down below. Full control of all systems, stabilizers, etc. from here. So it works very well. You'll see over the top, we've got a great hard top. Um, although you don't see the, the carbon fibre, she is actually a, a carbon uh, structure. And this one is particularly painted in the black, which really helps lower the side profile when you see it from outside. And then you've got this huge sliding uh, canopy in the centre here. And again, just to give you an idea, that's probably, you know, at least four and a half metres by five metres long which opens up to allow a lot more sun and light into the dining, into the bar area. And obviously you can stop it in any position. So if you want some shade at one particular end or a bit of protection, no problem at all. Now, if you continue down the port side, we've got the full wet bar and that incorporates the, the griddle, the barbecue here at one end, a raised shelf if you're sitting in the bar stools, sink, and then there's a bank of four drawer style refrigerators and an ice maker um, on this forward end. So again, it's quite nice. It can be set up as a serving bar, as if you're just helping yourself, you know, works extremely well for serving this top deck area. Now forward on the starboard side, as standard, we've got a double sunbathing area with flip up backrests, and then that converts going further aft into this huge seating area. I mean, again, to give you some idea of scale, I mean, sitting eight to 10 people here very easily. And then with a table, which either can be folded out, as you've just seen, or simply fold those leaves back in to give more, you know, just an area to put your drinks if you're casually sitting there and not dining. Underneath all of these cushions, you've got storage. So again, to store all your practicalities away, very easily done. And then just behind of that seating, just aft, you've got another cabinet here, which again is mainly for storage, could be for crockery, for glassware, extra refrigeration, you know, gives you a multitude of options really on how you use that cabinet. Now, if we come further aft, we come into what is a bit of a well, a huge dance floor really at the moment and it's it's left purposely empty in this way 
so we can accommodate every client's request. Now, hopefully on screen at the moment, you can see a few of the uh, options that have already been fitted from spa tubs to loose furniture to sunbathing, even a secondary tender position with a crane. So very easy to accommodate whatever the client's requests are for the use of this flybridge. And I think a, a, another beautiful feature is if you go right aft, we're used to seeing the upright stainless steel rails and crossbars, which, although very functional, obviously do block that view off. So with the way this is set up with this teak capping rail and then the curved glass panels here, it gives it another added feature and added practicality of seeing through and out over the aft end of the yacht. So coming right the way around the deck, the port side, we've got storage for the two 12-man uh, life rafts, all with a hydrostatic release, they release automatically if they're ever required. And then forward again, you've got this guardrail which protects the staircase going back down to the lower deck. And even there you've got a beautiful feature, which is this carbon fibre weave hatch which drops down to protect that flybridge when, it, when the staircase is not in use. So that's hopefully given you a good overview of the flybridge how flexible a space it is. But then now let's finish with a flourish, go to the four peak and really show you another special feature on this 90 ocean. So making your way down this staircase again, as with everything on the 90, great space, very easy access, good handholds and traversing to the four peak, extremely easy. First of all, great access to the side here. So if you've got a side mount boarding ladder, if you're against the key side, Again, very easy, open up, great access. Coming forward, nice little features that you'll see. The stainless steel deck drain here, including the Sunseeker name, but also more importantly, stopping any water or dew running back down the deck and stopping it from coming into the aft cockpit, even if you're washing down at the end of the day. Coming forward again, we've got access to the crew cabin, four berths, their own mess area, and it's even hidden into the glass structure here, so you don't even really realise that that door is uh, mounted into the superstructure. We already mentioned the glass earlier on in the, uh, in the video. You can see it from here, but also how secure these high bulwarks make you feel as you carry on forward. Great handholds, easy access to cleats and fair leads, and it leads us very nicely all the way through to the forepeak. And just look how high this bulwark is all the way forward. So adults, children alike, it's going to feel very, very safe and secure. So this is again what really makes this yacht stand out. You've got the full beam of this unusual shaped bow for a sun seeker, but you can see the benefits that gives you again. Look at the space across this deck you have with two four-seater uh, sofa areas, port and starboard. You've got this huge sofa aft here, which again, four or five people very easily. There's refrigeration both sides under here, so refrigeration drawers that pull out. Discrete lighting all the way around the deck for using the boat later at night. And also these pop-up lights, another key little feature, which at night make this area much more usable. You'll see the sockets here. So if you are in the med, in the sun, we've got a carbon fiber post uh, sail canopy awning system that can go up, give you some protection over the seating and over the sunbeds. So it's just a great place to be. Coming for further forward, easy access to both windlasses. So you see you've got twin windlasses here. So complete backup if you ever had a problem with one side or in worst case scenarios you can set both anchors in a Y to give you added security in windy conditions. And obviously two large lockers here which give you access to the chain lockers and extra storage for fenders, lines etc. Great access fair leads coming through forward and then obviously your remote mount spotlight right at the forepeak here. So this is just a space that is, is very unusual because in length it doesn't feel that long but because of the shape this curvature of the bow and the beam 
It just feels huge. And I think that's the one thing you take away from the 90 Ocean is that wherever we've been on this yacht, from the outside to the aft deck, all the way through the yacht, the spaces are just vast. And that's down to that shape, but also that beam on a 90 footer of over seven meters just gives it fantastic space. So I hope you've enjoyed this look through the new Sunseeker 90 Ocean. Uh, it's gonna be a series. The Ocean series will be coming with different models in future years. And I hope that we can see you here in Poole very soon. If not in Poole, then with one of our Sunseeker dealers worldwide. Thank you for watching and hopefully we'll see you soon.